As a freshman coming to the University of Minnesota, I knew from the start that I wanted to major in psychology. It fit my strengths, my goals, and my desire to help people. Coming in with my psychology blinders on made me closed off to considering any other paths or avenues that could distract me from graduating as soon as possible, which was likely why gender and women's sexuality studies was the furthest thing from my mind. I can very distinctly remember my first gender and women's sexuality studies class. I had signed up for it because it fulfilled three requirements for graduation, but I was so not excited for it. I expected the stereotype, a man-hating female professor shoving feminism down our throats, and a classroom of activist do-gooders ready to gobble it up. And with the title, Blood, Bodies, and Science, I had absolutely no clue what we were going to cover. So the first day, I sat in the back row and prepared myself to be bored out of my mind. And I absolutely was. It was another typical syllabi and expectation spewing first day of class, and I was utterly underwhelmed. But by our second and third classes, we began discussing genetics and science and the Tuskegee studies. And it wasn't just the usual science and genetics are amazing and objective fields that tell us wonderful truths about the world, or the Tuskegee syphilis studies were terrible and those horrible racist people were absolute barbarians. All of a sudden, there was a critical lens on everything. The simple truths I had always been taught weren't so simple anymore. The realization that everything we know is based on human seeing, observing, and interacting with the world was totally new to me. So as I relocated to the front row of the room, an entirely new place of interest and awareness took me in. All of these new ideas crystallized when we wrote our research essays at the end of the semester. I decided to write about something personal for me, psychology. It's my major and I absolutely loved it, but throughout the course, I'd come to question it more and more. So I chose to combine the two and I wrote and defended the argument that psychological research was deeply biased and that it claims to be a universal science, but it primarily studies a non-diverse population. For me, it was indescribably important. It was a way to use the critical lens attained through my gender and women's sexuality studies class and use it to grow something new from my old love of psychology. It allowed me to take a step back and be aware of the flaws, but more than that, it gave me a new awareness. I have no plans to abandon psychology. To leave it without at least trying to make it a better field would be a disservice to it and myself. So I decide to stay, to work, and to change. I think I owe it to me, to psychology, and to my very first gender and women's sexuality studies course at the U of M that set me on this path.